are in the basement with Tim Ross. So this is uh, obviously something you're very passionate about. Where did this start for you specifically? Like, how did you get to this place where you're like, man, I am tired of seeing the people that are just standing up here acting. Yeah. Like, yeah. So, um, dude, this was from the very beginning. Right. So, yo, again, welcome to the basement, y'all. I'm so glad I get to talk about this kind of stuff. This is like I'm I'm like doing backflips in my soul right now. So um, uh, I gave my life to Jesus January 14th of 1996. January 15th of 1996, I started reading the Bible, like straight up. You know what I mean? And so um, uh, started from Genesis 1. I had a King James reference, ta- Thompson Chain reference Bible, King James Version. And uh, started reading from Genesis 1-1. And, you know, I had dope parents. Like, my parents were the same. I have the rare preacher's kid story where my parents were the same in private that they were in public. They were they were not different people. So I didn't see any hypocrisy growing up, right? I didn't see any acting growing up. Whoever my parents were in private, that's who they were in public and vice versa. As a result of that, I I just I just um I just learned to see the world through their eyes and then my own that man just keep it real. You know what I'm saying? Let's just be authentic people. And whoever you are, you are. However you're feeling, you're feeling. And let that be it. And then I moved to Texas. Because <laughs> Cali is not a Bible belt, right? Cali is Cali is liberal. You give your life to Jesus and Cali, you meant it. Because you could be at the beach. right? You could be at the club. You could be at a rave. right? There's plenty of things to do in Cali. Not that there's nothing to do in the South, but man, East Coast, West Coast, we popping, right? So... I get to um I get to uh Texas man and this Bible belt and yo bro I've never seen so many people fake the funk as I saw when I moved out here. Church people. Church people like straight up like hey um I love Jesus. Down to have sex. I'm like I, did you do faith and fornication go together? I didn't know that. Is this are you, well, hey, we all got temptations and we all have needs and blah 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 blah. Yo, this is from uh, dude. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep disclaiming this is the basement because this is the second episode, y'all. Let me. I wore this shirt on purpose. I this was prophetic. I had no idea I was about to be talking about all this, but y'all about to get this work. I I literally I got to Texas and I was being propositioned for sex by men and women. Bro, I was twenty. Two years old when I moved here. I am saved like a year and a half. I move out here and church people. (laughs) Church people are like, hey, I love Jesus and I lust you. What's up? And I'm like, what? How? And I'm young. I'm trying to figure stuff out and and I got to figure I got to like protect myself from people that are like creepy. So I'm, you, you know, um, I I just had an anchor that, you know, my parents put a real like dope anchor on the inside of me at a very early age. And um, that's helped me navigate these 26 years. But I'm telling you like, and I'm telling you, right, this ain't everybody in the church, right? Like the whole church wasn't like this. None of the churches that I've been at, everybody in there wasn't crazy, but when you open up the when you open up the doors to your church, I'm talking to pastors right now. Everybody's coming in there. The streets is coming to church. The suburbs are coming to church. The corners are coming to church. You know what I'm saying? The block is coming to church. The neighborhood is coming to church. The hood is coming to church. Everybody coming to church. And when you get them all in the same room, people are at different levels of faith. People are at different levels of their journey. Here's another thing. People are at different levels of their own conviction. So these people that are propositioning me for saying, they thought, yeah, I, hey, I, I still love Jesus, but he knows I have needs. And I'm like, fam, I, I, I could never 
do this without me crying. It would, if, I would, lend, I would literally end up in a ball crying, asking God for forgiveness. There's no way I could have premarital sex and not feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit to be like, what did you just do? Now, let, let's, let's be clear. I have had, I did have premarital sex after I gave my life to Jesus and felt, I won't, obviously I won't name any names, but literally 90 seconds after our moment of passion was done, right? And I've ejaculated and like, oh, that was, that was blissful. Instant conviction of the Holy Spirit, not condemnation, but instant conviction of the Holy Spirit of, you know, you weren't supposed to be here. You know you weren't supposed to do that. This is not your wife. You need to repent. And she goes to the restroom, comes out of the restroom. I'm sitting on the edge of the bed. (laughs) She was panicked like, oh, my God, what has happened? I was like, I shouldn't have come here. I shouldn't be with you right now. And she's like, oh, my God, what's wrong? What did I do? I was like, you didn't do nothing. I came out. Uh, I gave my life to Jesus, and because I can't, uh, I gave my life to Jesus, and I'm so sorry. Sorry, I shouldn't have had sex with you. It was great, but I shouldn't have done it. And you're amazing, and I shouldn't have done it. And you're beautiful, and I, uh, uh, I should, I shouldn't have been here. I'm so sorry. Yo, I wasn't gonna have to do that 15 times in a row. Like, bro, that was, that was enough for me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm not talking out of theory. That's what I wanted. That I, I wanted to put that out there because I'm not talking from theory. I'm not sitting here like 26 years. I've done everything right. And so you should too. And the Bible says this. I've learned this from experience. Like I'm telling you not to do it because I did it and I already know how it goes. And I'm grateful that this happened early on when I gave my life to Jesus. And I'm not sitting up here 40, right, talking about a past how do I want to say this? Talking about a present, trying to masquerade it as a past. I'm going to let that marinate. There's a lot of people out here in these streets in ministry that are talking about their present like it's their past. Like it's a long time ago and it's a week ago. <laughs> I'm telling you something something a missing component in the discipleship process produced this ability to willfully sin and just think hey if i'd ask god for the forgiveness he'll just forgive me and hey i'll go as long as i can and if i fall just ask for forgiveness and keep on moving no at this point you are flagrant because you know what you're doing so That's my thought on that.